Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, I'd like to illustrate multiplication of two-digit whole numbers. And even more than that, I want to illustrate where the standard algorithm comes from that we use for multiplying multi-digit numbers. The cool thing is that can be illustrated very, very well using base 10 blocks that we've seen in some other settings. Now, in an earlier video, I talked about how you could represent very simple multiplication problems by imagining that you're building a tile floor. So let's say that you had a very small tile floor that consisted of two rows of tiles and three columns of tiles, two rows by three rows. The area or the number of tiles that you create would represent the product of those two numbers. Two times three is six. Two rows times three columns gives you six total units. And that's how many tiles are in your tile floor. And that's a simple way to illustrate multiplication. Now the same process can be used for larger numbers as well. If I'm multiplying 23 by 14, I just need to build a longer, uh, a bigger floor. 23 rows by 14 columns of tiles. Now, I could do that by just getting lots and lots of these units and very carefully making sure there's 23 rows and 14 columns. But I would be far better off if I use some of the bigger blocks that are available in base 10 blocks, like my flats and my logs. If you look at this flat, the flat consists of 10 rows by 10 columns. That's not enough for 23 by 14, but it gives you the idea that if I could just extend this in both directions, I ought to be able to get it to where it would have 23 rows and 14 columns. So it needs to be both wider and longer. I could do that by first of all, bringing in another flat. Now this would have 20 rows, still not quite enough, Still only has 10 columns, so definitely not enough of those. I'd like to eventually build a solid floor. So what I could do to extend it more in the vertical direction is take some of these longs and put three of those in here until it's 20, it's 10, 20, 23 rows long. It's still only 10 columns wide, but if I bring in more longs and thinking what, my, what I eventually want to do is fill in this whole floor into a nice rectangle, just a much bigger one than we had before with the, the few little uh, units. Now it is 14 units across and I just need to bring in more longs to fill in the space a little better. And eventually when I get down into this little corner down here, there's not using longs or flats. Is gonna, they're, all of those are going to be too big for this corner. So eventually you do have to bring in some units. But instead of creating the whole floor out of units, you just need it for this little bitty area that's left over down here. So I'm going to fill this in with it. however many uh, units as I need to get a complete rectangle. And the area of this rectangle, the total number of tiles would represent the product of 23 and 14. So now you see I have a nice complete floor. So I need to count all the units. And I could do that, I suppose, by going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and just counting forever and ever and ever. But I think I can be far more efficient than that. Let me just kind of spread these out a little bit to focus on the particular blocks that I used. This flat, for example, if I take that whole flat, because it's 10 rows by 10 columns, this represents 100. So I could do this far easier by just realizing that my two blocks, excuse me, my two uh, flats in here represent 200. So I'm going to come over here and write down 200. My ultimate goal is to count all of the little uh, base 10 units. That accounts for 200 of them. The longs, each long has 10 units in it. I see there's some longs over here on the right, and then there's some more longs down here on the bottom. I'm going to count those separately for reasons you'll see later. Counting over here on the side, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight longs. Each long has 10 units in it. 
So those longs account for 80 more units. So, so far we've counted these flats and all of these longs. You also have some longs down here. It's three of them, so that's gonna account for 30 more. And then finally, you have to count these little units down here, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If I add this up, that would be the total number of units in this entire tile floor that I've created. And more importantly, it will be the results of this multiplication problem. So let's add these up and see what we get. Going down the column, uh, adding all this up, you have a two. Coming down the tens column, you'd say eight plus three is 11 plus one is 12. 10 of the tens can be ex uh, exchanged for a flat, which is why we say when we end up with 12, we put the two in the tens place and carry a one to the hundreds place. And then we add one more time and that gives me 322. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back through this multiplication and show you how the standard algorithm we use for multiplication really is counting blocks. And I think I convince you, convince you that. If I do a little thinking for a minute, and I'm not going to go a whole long way with this, the 23 is 20 plus three, and the 14 is 10 plus four. So this is my little imagination bo box here. If I want to multiply these two numbers, what I would just simply need to make sure is that the four from the second number gets multiplied by both the three and the 20. That's essentially the distributive law. And the 10 from the second number also needs to be multiplied by the three and the 20. Or basically every digit in the second number needs to be multiplied by every digit of the first number, keeping close track of your place value. Let's do that, and I'm hoping that you'll see the really strong connection with what I did with the tiles. So let me start over here, 23 times 14. And think about more or less how we would do this in sort of the standard form. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a switcheroo on you here. Four gets multiplied by three, and that would give you a 12. So I'm going to write down the number 12 right here. This four also has to be multiplied by the two, but I need to remember that that two is not really a two, it's a 20. Four times 20 is 80. Let's connect these in with the blocks that we've created and, and just sort of see what this is. The four times the three, that's a unit times a unit. So you're gonna be counting units and there are 12 of them. That's these little 12 guys right here. That's them. Four times 20 gives me 80. 80 would be eight longs, and guess what? Those are these fellows right here. And the reason this is so is if I make, if I imagine connecting two longs into like a super long, this is 20 units from one end of the super long to the other, and there's four of them, four times 20. The four times 20 is right here. Now down below, when you multiply the one, because we're gonna have to multiply one by both, one times three is not really one times three. The one is in the tens place. So we're really looking at 10 times three and that's 30. And guess where, what those are? And to get this back on the screen a little bit better, that's these guys. That's these longs down here. So the 12 is my units. And this is getting kind of messed up. It's okay. Uh, the four times 20, the 80 is these longs. The 10 times three is the 30, that's these longs. Finally, you'd need to multiply the one by the two, but it's not one and two. This is a 10 and that's 20. And one times 20 is going to be 200. So this is coming apart or coming down in a different order. But notice we're getting those same numbers that we got from simply counting the blocks. And if we add those up, we'll add down this row. That gives me a two. Eight plus one is nine plus three is 12. And carry the three. And it looks a whole lot like the standard algorithm we use for multiplication with just a little twist. When we usually do the multiplication algorithm, we essentially take two of these calculations and do them at the same time. 
when I created this calculation, I multiplied four by three and got 12 and then four times 20 and got 80. The way we usually do that is we do those two together. So I'd say four times three is 12, which creates a two in the ones place and a 10, excuse me, a one in the tens place. So I don't forget that one that in, in the tens place, we usually make a little mark up here. And when we multiply the four times the two, we're really doing the four times the 20. That gives me the 80, but with the extra 10 brought in, that would give me a 92. And if you look at it, the sum of these two, 80 times 12, gives you the 92. So we're really, in this calculation, creating this tile floor. And we've looked at the units, one of which just fell in my lap, and the units over here on the side. Now, when we go to the next row, the standard algorithm, depending on how it's presented to you, because it is presented in one of two ways, people will either say, leave the ones place blank or put a zero there. Either is okay, uh, I'm gonna put the zero because it illustrates what's really happening. When I say one times three, uh, what that is doing is really multiplying 10 times three. So the answer is 30 when I multiply the one times the three. And then when I multiply the one by the two, that's really 10 times 20 and that gives me 200. That 230 is basically those two rows stuck together. But what we've counted in there is the longs that are down here on the bottom and the two big flats. So the standard multiplication process that we use kind of through this sort of modified version to begin with is really what we're illustrating with the tile floor. Let's finish this off to be complete. If I add these up, two times two plus zero is uh, two. Nine plus three in the tens place makes a 12 where you have to carry a one over into the hundreds place, 322. And the cool thing is if you're teaching multiplication, you can create a number of multiplication problems where you use your base 10 blocks to represent that product and then as you go through the multiplication algorithm, focus carefully on how that connects back to the blocks. And you'll basically see that the blocks are explaining the standard process or algorithm for multiplying two digit numbers. So I hope that was really, really helpful. And we're gonna stop there.